Hello, hello, hello. Hey, it is Friday and I welcome you, welcome you, welcome you right here to the bridge. I am excited that you are a part of this today's broadcast. I am Chelsea Payne, founder of Payne and Glory Incorporated and the administrator of this particular group. Pain in the Pews Mental Health and Ministry. I'm going to give you guys just a few moments to, to come on in and get, get in. I'm here in the office today. Um, had a lot going on today, um, but I'm so glad that you are here. Um, hey, Dr. Manns. Hey, so glad that you are here. Um, and we are going to get started in just a moment. I am so glad um, that you're here um, joining in. We have um, here on the bridge, we have, we talk about, discuss, we discuss different topics here in the Pain and Abuse Mental Health and Ministry uh, group page. We talk about different topics that may not necessarily always be talked about in mainstream, but we make sure that we get the opportunity to, to share um, is wisdom, insight, and just some good old-fashioned discussion and dialogue right here in the bridge. Um, so today is no different. So give me a moment. I am getting things set up here. And today's topic is about infections. It's not going to be all that pretty. It's going to be... <laughs> Uh, depends. Depends on your vantage point. Depends on your vantage point. But there, we're going to be talking about there's a there's a virus that's spreading in the spiritual hospital. That's what we're going to be talking about today. Not going to be on here long, um, but I'm definitely going to. Hopefully, this will make an impact, make a difference um, for those that are watching. Um, as you're coming on, I'm glad that you're here. Um, again, I'm Chelsea Payne, founder of Pain and Glory Incorporated and the administrator of this particular group, Pain and Abuse Mental Health and Ministry. Feel free as you're joining in, let me know that you're here because sometimes it doesn't always pop up um, when someone is joining. And forgive me for moving things around. I'm trying to um, trying to make sure that everyone can see and hear and uh, that I have all the pieces in place just for you, okay? All right, let's see here. Awesome sauce. Got it, got it, got it, got it. So, as I said, there's a virus spreading in the spiritual, uh, the spiritual um, hospital. And so I did, um, I, I've been having conversations and kind of interviewed like sessions with different people. Um, and I'm finding out something that is very key. Um, you know, we, a lot of times, let me get this set up. It seems like I'm cut off a little bit. A lot of times or many times you have heard that the church is our spiritual hospital. I'm, I'm sure you have heard that um, said at one point or another that the church is a spiritual hospital as well as it should be. The church should be a place where we come, um, those that are broken, those that are, that are in need of help and healing and strength and power and encouragement, that we come and we learn about the Word of God and we come and get impacted by the Word of God that fills us with a, new, a renewed strength that gives us healing and encourages our hearts to, that, we are be, that we're able to sustain and move forward um, in our daily walk, a lot of times, um, and we're talking since we're here in the in the mental health and ministry um, group, um, we definitely want to delve into the to the topic that we're talking about today, and that is a lot of times, um, if we look at an at an actual hospital, a medical hospital, I shouldn't say a medical hospital, uh, one of the most common things that that can take place in a medical health facility is that of infection, especially someone who has been there for any length of time. Um, if a patient is there um, and their stay, you know, for any length of time, um, it is it's quite po possible and probable that they can contract an infection 
Um, and that's why there are measures that are taken by the professional staff there, the medical staff there, to ensure that the patients there do not contract uh, an infection. One of the most common um, infections is staph. And staph um, is, is short for staphylococcus. Um, and it's a germ bacteria, it's a germ slash bacteria that can cause infection in any part of the body. Bear that in mind, and this is the, the general term for staph. It can cause um, infections in, in any part of the body, but most are skin infections. Staph can infect openings in the skin and scratches and pimples and blah, blah, blah. A little nasty there. Um, but skipping over all the other gross stuff, um, the last thing it says on here is that anyone, anyone can get a staph infection. It's important to remember as we, as we talk a little bit about the infection that is in the spiritual hospital. Anyone can get infection. I was reading and I found out that um, many people, especially the carriers um, of staph, oftentimes don't know that they have the infection. A lot of us are carriers of staph, especially it went on to talk about here in the article, um, it went on to talk about how people can come into the hospital with a staph infection. That's not why they're there. They come in with a staph infection on their skin or whatever or any of these other things that they list here and they not know it. But oftentimes, it is um, within the hospital. I say this because a lot of times people come into the spiritual hospital, the church, and they become, they come in not, they come in with one issue, but they come, as, as people go in with the, into the hospital, they go in with one issue, but because there is a carrier or carriers that are carrying um, staph infection or carrying something that can do more harm than good, then the person who came in for one reason now has another issue. They've contracted an infection. That infection can be stigma. That infection can be misunderstanding. That infection can be wounding. That infection can be um, feeling isolated. That infection can be um, um, feeling overlooked, that infection can be um, so many things, so many things. And left untreated, one thing that I did find in my, in my reading about staff, left untreated or left, um, or depending on a person's immune system, it can become aggressive and then turn into MRSA, which is M MRSA. And that infection is much more aggressive, it's much more harmful, it's much more, and in some cases can be deadly. Imagine being in a situation where you are in a place of healing, a place of restoration, a place where you are to, to where you're going there to become better, and in the midst of that, being treated for one thing, you wind up getting, having to be treated or not treated for something else. Your, your immune system is already compromised because you're dealing with whatever your issue is, um, mental health issues, um, social issues such as abuse, domestic abuse. You could be dealing with um, financial issues, whatever you know it is. And then you get in the, the hospital and you contract this, this infection. Now it is spreading and the unfortunate part of it is that you don't necessarily know where you contracted it from. You don't necessarily know where it came from. Did it come from this word that was spoken over me? Did it come from how this person treated me? Did it come from how I received what someone said or did not say? Did it come from actions that were taken against me? Did it come from uh, misunderstanding that it come from stigma of of what a person thinks that I'm supposed to be like, look like, act like, dress like. Did it come from just lack of attention um, into, in a certain area? Were you overlooked? Um, kind of like when a person is in a, in a hospital and 
there are sores and there are, um, as the definition gives here, there are, you know, skin irritations that um, alert the medical staff that there is, is the possibility of there being a staph infection, but maybe your infection went overlooked or undetected as pertains to the, to, to the spiritual hospital. What are some, and I, I posed this question earlier, and feel free to type in, you know, your responses if you feel comfortable, you know, and if not, I totally understand. But what are some examples? I'll, I'll put it that way so that way it's not looking like, you know, you're, you're speaking on one particular instance or a, per, or a personal instance. But what are some examples that, that we have, that we've seen or maybe even experienced of what could cause a spiritual infection? You know what? I, you know I listed quite a few just now. Ouch! <laughs> Hurting myself. I listed quite a few just now, um, but you know maybe you have other instances. While you're thinking of some, I will give you um, an example of one that was shared with me two different times, two different people, two different. Um, how do I say this? Two different. Um, Generations, two different age age gaps, and it was definitely an age gap. But their their stories were very similar. Both of them had um, or have mental health issues. Both of them, um, well, one of them, I don't know the other, but one of them um, had been abused as a child, sexually molested as a child, and this happened through the church, and when she tried the person number one tried to um express this and try to let people know that this was happening as a child she was kind she wasn't heard um and that pain that she already had from the from what she was experiencing was only made worse by the by the fact that those who were there to protect her just as a nurse or a physician or or a physician or medical health professional is there to protect you and to look after you and make sure that you were served and made whole and healthy. Same thing happened in the spiritual hospital for this young, at the time, this young lady, little girl, she wasn't even a young lady yet, little girl, where she was not heard. Um, her infection, there, therein lie the beginning of the infection. It is now leading to Mercer because she grew up and she became an adult. Things continued to happen to her throughout her teenage years. She became an adult and this untreated infection was, was leading to a spiritual MRSA, M-R-S-A, which, which is what can cause major damage to your whole system. And in some cases, people have have passed away from Mercer. This in her her spiritual Mercer was she left the church completely. She left. She turned she turned and walked away. She left because the hurt was so intense no one was hearing the cry of her spirit, the cry of her heart. No one was coming when the proverbial nurse button was being pushed. No one was coming to see about this injured person who was now suffering from an infection that was consuming her. The other person, who was the younger of the two ladies, hers was similar in that she experienced a mental, hers was not due to sexual abuse, hers was she had a mental health issue that um, probably was from birth, but when she became an adolescent, it began to show up more prevalently. And when she had to go into a mental health facility to be, you know, to make sure that, you know, she's healthy, to make sure she's, you know, all is well. When she came out of the mental health facility and went into back to church where she should have been loved and embraced and strengthened and empowered, she found that this was the place that gave her hurt and damage and pain and stigmatism and felt, and therein lies the, the, the onset of the infection. But what can we do? We know we know causes. We know that there are causes, and 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 probably more than we did, than we can list here. Um, you know, trust, and you know, um, there's there's a level of trust or distrust. There's a level of of uh, as I said before, stigmatism, and and stigmatism is not just relegated to um, mental health issues. Stigmatism for so many things, so many things. 
um, there's, there's narcissism, um, and there's uh, misogyny. Um, there's, there's a lot that, that we, you know, may not talk about, but it's there, and people are becoming infected and hurt. The place where they are to find help and healing, and by and large are, I'm not saying, please understand, this is not a church bashing um, um, uh, broadcast. This is, I, I am not doing that. What I am doing is what I would like to call a public service announcement where we can get help and healing and stop maybe the spread of the infection. Or at least, you know, just like in the hospitals, we can't fully stop a, 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 the staff infection from, from every aspect of every hospital. Can't really do that. But there are measures that we can take. There are things that we can do to, to try to cut down the, the, the spread of infection. One of the things it talks about here um, in the, in, on the definition of staff, it, it gives you um, how to prevent the spread of infection, right? And it says... It says healthcare workers and other hospital staff can prevent staff infection by. So it gives us some in information on how to, in the, in the actual hospital setting, what can be done to stop staff infection. The first is washing their hands before and after they touch every patient. The Bible tells us to have, that we should, are to have clean hands. We are to have clean hands. We are to have a pure heart and clean hands. Here in the natural, it says washing our hands before and after touching every patient. You you got to be careful when you're dealing with people that the way that you deal with Susie may not be the way that you deal with Harry. You have to have clean hands. One when you when you're ministering and dealing with this person, this person may not need that same type of delivery. Clean hands. And 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 in that clean hands analogy making sure that what you have in you is not affecting and infecting someone else. It says, it goes on about giving healthy things like wearing gloves and protective clothing when they treat wounds. Um, and here's another thing. People come in wounded. People come into the house of hope, the house of prayer, the house of faith, our, our, our centers of belief. They come in wounded. But are we girded up? Are we prepared? Are we wearing the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, our, our feet shot with the preparation of peace? Are we wearing the necessary garments to protect ourselves and the other person from, from further harm? What are we wearing? And it says um, using the proper sterile techniques, promptly cleaning up after prop, promptly cleaning up after dressing the damage, the bad let me try reading this again because that does not say that. Let me try reading that again slowly with my new mouth. Let me try this again. Promptly cleaning up after dressing bandage, changings, procedures, surgeries, and spills. So, it, you know, properly cleaning up. Are, are we apologizing when we get it wrong? Are we properly cleaning up our messes? Are we properly making sure that when a person is hurt, that we're going in and bandaging up and, and bandaging, cleaning up their wounds the way that we, that the Bible instructs us to, quickly to, without delay, securing a, 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 an apology immediately, asking for forgiveness and forgiving someone else? Are we putting things in place that where we are making sure that the area that needs the most attention and that is a kind of a messy situation is cleaned up. Are we cleaning up our messes? And lastly, checking for and promptly reporting any sign of wound infections. When we see something that's not quite right, are we, are we trying to help? Are we just kind of, that's just how it is. That's just how they are. That's how, just how we, we speak. That's just how we do things. That's just while well, people are walking out and literally dying, naturally and spiritually. Are we checking in? Are we checking for promptly reporting any sign of wound infections? When we see that, that the already sick are now further wounded, what are we doing? 
So I gave this analogy. I, saw, I did a side-by-side -side of what staff and MRSA looked like from the natural side, from a physical standpoint, but I brought it in to a spiritual standpoint. What are we doing to help those that are wounded, that we are not inflicting more harm by, by infecting them with, a, with an infection such as staff or MRSA spiritually that can do more harm than good? Something to think about. There's something that we can do, and that is truly show love to one another. There's something we can do. We can stop the stigma. We can stop treating people as though they don't matter. You matter. From my mouth to your ears, you matter. You matter. You matter. Listen, this is The Bridge. I'm happy that you're here. This is Chelsea, a cookie pain founder of Pain and Gore Incorporated and the administrator of this particular group, Pain and Diffuse Mental Health and Ministry. I would love to hear your feedback. I would love to hear what you have to say um, as pertains to, you know, experiences you've heard of or, or seen or even some solutions on how we can help to not spread the infection and identify the, 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 the spiritual infections that are taking place. I want to thank you for joining in. Don't forget, coming up September 21st, we will be hosting our fifth annual Pain and Abuse Mental Health and Ministry Conference. It's going to be dynamic. It really is. It's going to be great. We've got some special guests, some things lined up, um, and it's going to be so good. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be held in Douglasville. You're going to see more promotions about that coming up soon. Be sure to uh, continue to follow us here on social media. There's always good things coming up. I want to thank you guys. I'll see you soon. You Actually, sooner than you think, I'll be coming back again, sharing more information. Again, if you missed our broadcast on CBD oil, you can catch the replay right here, or it's pinned at the top of our Pain and Glory page, so you can always catch the replay and find out more information about CBD oil. I love you guys, and I hope you have a wonderful and safe weekend. I'll speak to you soon.